Okay, we're going to re begin a review of Unit F, Rotational Motion. So uh, here goes. If you have um, a function for theta, that's 2 radians per second q uh, to the 4th power times t to the 4th plus 6 radians, what will be um, uh, the expression for omega? So go ahead and pause and try and, try, try and find the expression for omega. Okay, omega is d theta dt. So um, you need to take the derivative, so that's going to give you 8 radians. You leave the units alone per seconds to the fourth t cubed, and then that goes to 0. So the omega at 1 second would just be 8 radians per second if you wanted that. Okay, could you tell me what the um, angular acceleration will be at one second? What will be the angular acceleration at one second? Go ahead and pause. Okay, angular acceleration is the derivative of omega with respect to time. So that would be um, 24 radians over seconds to the fourth times t squared. So to get alpha at one second then, you would just put um, one second into there and you'd get 24 radians per second squared. Okay, could you um, tell me, well, I think we'll, we'll finish with that. Um, but like if you wanted to get the torque, if the question asked you for torque, it would just, they'd have to give you I times alpha. So you'd put you'd find alpha and then you just multiply it by i. If they wanted to get angular momentum, it would just be i omega. So you could find omega and multiply by i. Okay. So now we have a meter stick that's balanced on a fulcrum, but not in its center. Instead, it's balanced at the twenty centimeter mark. From from there to there is twenty centimeters. Uh, so the mass of this meter stick is being balanced out by a 100 gram mass. So can you tell me um, what the mass of the meter stick is? That's the question. What is the mass of the meter stick? See in a little bit. Go ahead and pause. Okay, well, the way that you do this is the torque due to the weight of the meter stick, we're going to put that at the 50 centimeter mark, and that's down. And um, that's got to be balanced out by that torque. So it's a battle of the torque, so I'm going to say the torque from the meter stick is going to be the mass of the meter stick, the m we're after, times g, times, now this distance, if this is 50, then that's got to be 30. So you're 30 from the axis, so times 30, or 0.3 meters. That has to be balanced out by the 100 gram mass, 0.1 kilograms, times um, g, times, and that's 20 centimeters from, from the axis, so 0.2 meters. Okay, so um, now we can get rid of a G. And um, if I bring the, the 0.3 meters on the other side, then it looks like um, the mass of the meter stick is about two-thirds of um, 0.1 kilograms. So it's about 67 grams. Okay, moving right along. Here's an Atwood's machine. Um, now, um, let's see, this is an unknown mass. This is uh, a pulley that has an I of 0.01 kilograms meter squared and a radius of 0.1 meters. Um, the two tensions in the rope are not equal. They never are. If the pulley has mass, then the two tensions are not equal. And um, let's say this has a mass of 1 kilogram, and it's accelerating downward at 2 meters per second squared. Okay, if that's the case, could you tell me what the tension Ft1 is if we know that it's accelerating down at 2 meters per second squared? What is the tension Ft1? Okay, go ahead and pause. Okay, so um, to get the tension Ft1, we can just look at the 
the um, the one kilogram mass, and I can say a a equals the net force on this guy. So that's going to be 10 newtons down. That's winning minus ft1 all over um, the mass of that guy, one kilogram. So if I bring that over, that's going to give me two newtons. So ft1 is apparently is 8 newtons. Okay, back to the problem. So now we know that this is 8 newtons. Okay, um, would you be able to, to tell me um, if this is going with a constant or an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, what will be, if there is no slipping here of the string on the pulley, what will be the angular acceleration of the pulley? Can you tell me what the angular acceleration of the pulley will be? Okay, go ahead and pause. Okay, we're back. Um, so a bug right here will have the same acceleration as a bug right here. Well, has the same acceleration tangentially as a bug right there. And so we can use a screwdriver equation. We know that the bug right there is going to accelerate with 2 meters per second squared. And so let's do the screwdriver equation. So the screwdriver equation is um, A is equal to alpha R. And so um, alpha is equal to A over R. So that's going to be 2 meters per second squared all over R, 0.1 meters so I'm getting 20 radians per second there. That's what it will be, 20 radians per second squared. That's what alpha is. Okay, next question. Um, if alpha is 20 radians per second squared, could you tell me what FT2 is? See if you can find out what FT2 is. See you in a little bit. Go ahead and pause. Okay, we're back. Um, FT2 is uh, it's like it's a rope pulling this way now ropes only pull so it's pulling that way this one's pulling this way and those are the only two forces putting torques on the thing on the pulley so if this is the pulley and if i know there's eight newtons pulling down and um, i know that ft2 is pulling this way um, if i is 0.01 um, kilograms meter squared and if I know that alpha is 20 radians per second squared then um, I can get what I can get what FT2 is because alpha equals net torque over I so alpha 20 radians per second squared is equal to the net torque so the net torque is going to be 8 newtons times, now the radius is 0.1 meters. Do you see how that's a, a torque from this guy? Minus FT2 times um, 0.1 meters. That's the other torque. It's, a, it's an opposing torque. All over the rotational inertia, which is 0.01 um, kilograms meters squared. If I bring this on the other side, that gives me 0 0.2. 0 0.2, and that's going to be Newton meters, is equal to 0 0.8 Newton meters minus FT times 0 0.1 meters. So FT2, I should call that 2, is, um, is 6 Newtons. Yeah, we knew that he had to because it's 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 accelerating like that. We knew that this one had to be bigger than this one, and it is. It's eight newtons versus six newtons. Okay. Finally, can you give me what the mass is on the top of the table there? What is the mass on the top of the table? Go ahead and pause. Okay. The mass on the top of the table is there's only one force on it, and so. We know that acceleration, that's the acceleration, that's equal to the FT2 all over M. And FT2 is 6 newtons. So you can solve for that. Bye.